The topic of slave breeding is one of the most heart-wrenching and shocking aspects of human history that is often overlooked and unspoken in educational curriculums. The mere mention of it elicits a sense of profound sadness and anger, as it unveils the inhumane and brutal treatment that enslaved people were subjected to during the era of American slavery. Despite being a vital part of American history, the truth about slave breeding is often swept under the rug and students are left ignorant of the atrocities that occurred. It's a sad reality that this significant aspect of the past is often deemed too uncomfortable to teach, leaving students with a limited understanding of the brutalities of slavery. However, what many of us don't know is that the abolition of the slave trade in the early 19th century led to the emergence of an even more heinous aspect of slavery, the practice of slave breeding. In this video, we will expose the 10 most horrific facts of slave breeding and sex farms in the United States, a difficult but necessary step in acknowledging the brutality and inhumanity of slavery in all its forms. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking content like this. Before we go any further with our video, make sure to check out the products of Mizizi International, who are the official sponsor of our video today. Meeting roots in Swahili, Mizizi is the streetwear brand uniting the African diaspora through its sportswear-inspired looks in celebration of culture and heritage. From collaborating with Marvel on a Black Panther jersey to being profiled by the likes of Hype Beast and Vogue, Mizizi has exciting and high-quality products to choose from. Visit Mizizi.com for more information. Buy African, wear African, and stay rooted with Mizizi streetwear. Fact 1. Enslaved women were treated as mere breeding machines, subjected to repeated sexual encounters with multiple men in an effort to impregnate them. During the era of slavery in the United States, the exploitation and inhumane treatment of enslaved women went beyond forced labor and physical abuse. Slave breeding farms, scattered throughout the southern United States, were the breeding grounds of an unthinkable enterprise, the selective mating of enslaved men and women to produce the most robust and profitable offspring, treated as mere commodities. These farms were operated by wealthy plantation owners who saw slave breeding as a lucrative business opportunity and often took it even further, creating sex farms where young girls were forced into sexual activity and their offspring sold off at auctions. The climate and soil were more favorable in the Deep South. Cotton production was well adapted to the region, and there was a considerable demand for slave labor, particularly among women. In these estates, terrible physical and sexual torture frequently occurred with no chance of recovery. When they attempted to flee or seek remedy, they were treated as objects rather than people, and so were their corpse. The practice of forced breeding was not limited to the Deep South, but was also widespread in other areas of the nation, such as the Northern Midwest and the Chesapeake Bay area. These region's plantation owners also saw enslaved women as a way to increase their profits, their riches and influence, and utilize them appropriately. The evidence of this horrific practice can be found in historical records, including plantation records and slave narratives, which reveal the dehumanizing treatment of these women. Despite their difficult circumstances, and enslaved women such as Harriet Jacobs, a woman who lived as a slave mid-19th century in her native North Carolina memoirs events in a slave girl's life. In her account details the horror of being compelled to have sex with her owner and bear children. She was able to document her experiences and shed light on the atrocities of forced breeding. These records include enslaved women who served as breeders or breeding stock and indicates the number of children these women have had, along with their age, health, and other information. Fact 2. Enslaved women were coerced into engaging in sexual relationships with their owners. Enslaved women were not only subject to sexual exploitation by their masters and overseers, but this heinous practice was widespread across the first half of the American South. The evidence of female slaves being sexually abused dates back to the transatlantic slave trade, where they were frequently kidnapped and forced to endure the harsh voyage across the ocean in confined spaces with poor sanitation. Upon arrival in the American South, enslaved women were further subjected to sexual abuse by the crew and other male slaves. Unfortunately, this was not the only form of sexual violence they experienced. Enslaved women were also raped and abused in various ways, 
making their already horrific existence even more unbearable. Enslaved women were often subjected to forced sexual relationships and prostitution by their owners and overseers, who took advantage of their power and control over them. These relationships were frequently violent and coercive, leading to many slave women becoming pregnant. However, their offspring were not treated as human beings, but rather as commodities to be bought and sold like any other slave. This practice of slave breeding was common in the Upper South, where children were produced and sold to the Lower South for profit. One well-known example of this practice is the story of Sally Hemings, a slave who was owned by former U.S. President Thomas Jefferson. Hemings was forced into a romantic relationship. Four out of the six children she had with Jefferson survived into adulthood. While Thomas Jefferson was alive, he did not acknowledge them as his own children. However, DNA evidence has since confirmed their lineage. Another harrowing illustration of sexual abuse is the story of Celia, a slave woman owned by Robert Newsom in Missouri. Newsom subjected Celia to repeated acts of rape, and when she became pregnant, he denied paternity of a child. In an act of self-defense, Celia killed Newsom. However, she was charged with murder, found guilty, and hanged. This case exposes the brutal reality of sexual assault and other forms of cruelty endured by many slave women in the American South. Fact 3. Offspring produced on sex farms were taken away from their families and sold shortly after being weaned. During the time of slavery, it was not uncommon for families to be separated and for enslaved children to be sold away from their parents. Enslaved women were often forced to bear children on sex farms by men who were not their partners or husbands. These children born on sex farms were viewed as commodities and were sold for profit, rather than being considered a part of a nuclear family. Historical records indicate that many plantation owners saw the sale of enslaved children as a lucrative business opportunity. The price of an enslaved child varied based on factors such as age, gender, and health, but they were typically sold for more money than adult slaves. Enslaved children were often considered valuable assets due to their potential to grow up and become productive workers. However, they were frequently sold at public auctions to prospective owners, who would use them for breeding purposes. These auctions were often traumatic experiences for the children, who were forcibly separated from their mothers and other family members. Historian Edward E. Baptist's book, The Half Has Never Been Told, describes the emotional toll that these auctions took on both the slaves being sold and the survivors. When families were torn apart, enslaved people expressed their anguish through tears and cries of despair. Some even attempted to grab onto something as they were auctioned off, desperately hoping to hold onto their children, parents, or loved ones. Facts 4. Certain plantation owners would incentivize enslaved men by offering rewards for impregnating the highest number of women. The notion of rewarding a person for engaging in multiple relationships with women may seem unimaginable. However, during the time of slavery, some enslaved men who worked on sex farms were confronted with this grim reality. Plantation owners would provide enslaved males with incentives for having the most offspring that might be profitably sold. This method increased the enslaved people's dehumanization and solidified their status as property rather than as free-willing, autonomous human beings. In some situations, crop owners would even go so far as even encourage competition among enslaved men for impregnating slave women. This harmful practice not only inflicted trauma upon the enslaved women, but also created a hazardous environment for the enslaved men. One example of this kind of behavior can be found in the diary of a young girl, James Hammond, a plantation owner in South Carolina during the mid-1800s, wrote in his diary about his efforts to profit from breeding enslaved people. He offered prizes to slaves who could produce the most offspring and boasted about the fertility of his enslaved males. This kind of behavior is not only morally repugnant, but it also had long-lasting consequences for the enslaved individuals who were forced to participate. Watch the full length of the video on our new documentary channel, The New Africa Documentary. Check the video description or the comment section for the channel link. As always, make sure to subscribe to the new channel for more exciting future documentaries in Africa.